Rule number 84. A circumstantial cum clause has an imperfect or pluperfect subjunctive verb and shows the circumstances that accompanied the action of the main clause. In the previous rule, number 83, we saw that cum as a conjunction can be translated as when and shows the time that the main clause happens, and the verb in the cum clause is in the indicative mood. Moenia duxit tum cum urbem condidit. He built the walls at the time when he founded the city. And our verb condidit is in the perfect tense indicative mood. In this rule, we are going to look at situations when the verb in the cum clause is in the subjunctive mood, and yet we still translate cum as when. And this is called the circumstantial cum clause, as opposed to a temporal one, since we're focused more on the circumstances rather than the time of the main verb action. We see this construction with the imperfect and pluperfect tenses. Cum milites opido apropinquarent, hostes agressi sunt. When our soldiers were approaching the town, the enemy attacked. Here we have the imperfect subjunctive verb apropinquarent, and so the cum clause is showing the circumstances that accompanied or even led to the enemy attack. Cum essem otiosus in Tusculano, a capi tuas literas. Cicero says, when I was relaxing in Tusculum, I received your letter. And remember that literae is a plural form that regularly has a singular meaning in English, a written letter. Here, our cum clause verb is essem, in the imperfect subjunctive, and it's showing not the time that Cicero received the letter, but what was going on at that time when the letter came. Cum senator laqueretur omnes tacevant. When the senator was speaking, everyone was silent, under the circumstances of the senator speaking. Eventually, in Latin, the imperfect subjunctive comes to show an action that's happening at the same time as the main clause, and so the senator was speaking at the same time that everyone was silent, and so this cum clause is equivalent to a clause introduced by dum with the present indicative. So, cum pro castris fortissime pugnarat alquisus est, when he was fighting very bravely in front of the camp, he was killed, is more or less equivalent to dum pugnat, okisos est. In addition, since we're talking about two actions happening contemporaneously at the same time, we can also use the present participle in place of the cum clause and get more or less the same meaning. Pro castris fortissime pugnans, okisos est. While fighting very bravely in front of the camp, he was killed. In contrast to the imperfect subjunctive, we also can use the pluperfect subjunctive to show an action that has already happened. Cum haec dixisset, silentium consecutum est. When he had said these things, silence followed. Here, our pluperfect subjunctive dixisset shows that this action is completed prior to the silence. Or, caesari cum id notiatum esset, maturat ab urbe proficisci. When this had been announced to Caesar, he hurries to leave the city. We first have the message, which gives us the already completed circumstances for the next action, Caesar's departure. This use of the pluperfect subjunctive, because it shows an action that's already happened, arises to be pretty much equivalent to a posquam or ubi clause, rule number 82, with the indicative mood. So cum hoc fe kisset ab it, when he had done this, he left, is equivalent to posquam hoc fake it, ab it. After he did this, he left. And just as the sense of the present participle is like a cum clause with the imperfect subjunctive, a perfect participle, which shows a completed action, is like our cum clause with the pluperfect subjunctive, hoc facto ab it. With this done, he left. After he did this, when he had done this, etc. So how does a cum circumstantial clause differ from a cum temporal clause, which we discussed in Rule 83? In other words, when do we use the subjunctive, circumstantial, and when do we use the indicative, temporal? And here the distinction requires a bit of a nuance that might not be so clear in English, so I'll try to do my best. When we're talking about a specific time period, we're going to use cum with the indicative. So cum caesar in Gallium venit, Alterius factionis principes erant idui, alterius sequani. 
When Caesar came to Gaul, the Aedui were leaders of one faction, the Sequani of another. And note the ellipsis that's so typical of Caesar's writing. Here, the cum clause, which has the perfect indicative wane it, is dating the observation about the Aedui and Sequani. But if we swap out wane it with wainisset, our pluperfect subjunctive, now our cum clause shows the circumstance that accompanied the factionalization of Gaul. And our cum clause would imply that this separation into groups didn't take place until after Caesar's arrival. As noted before, this cum caesar wainisset clause is equivalent to posquam caesar wainit, after Caesar came to Gaul. In other words, cum plus the subjunctive describes the time by its circumstances, while cum plus the indicative denotes the time specifically. We can also look at this in a different way. So let's take the English sentence, when I was in Rome, I saw the emperor. If this sentence was answering the question of when did you see the emperor, we would translate it as a cum temporal with the indicative mood. Cum Romae eram imperatorem vidi. But if the question is instead, what did you do when you were in Rome? Now our cum clause is giving the situation rather than the time. And we would use the subjunctive. Cum Romae esem imperatorem vidi. But you know, you sometimes can find an indicative verb used when you think the subjunctive would be better, especially in early Latin. So this has been rule 84. A circumstantial cum clause has an imperfect or pluperfect subjunctive verb and shows the circumstances that accompany the action of the main clause.